Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Which DDR4 memory module should you buy for your Intel or AMD Ryzen based computer? This video is an attempt to demystify the confusing RAM market. There are so many different choices. What speed, what capacity, what brand should you buy? I'm gonna be taking a look today at a variety of different options and then I'll make specific recommendations for both budget as well as high-end systems from both AMD and Intel, what I think you should buy and what the deal is. Now first up, linked in the video description below will be links to both Amazon and Newegg. The key modules I'm going to discuss here will be linked directly in the video description and then I will put a general link that will have the entire list so that you can check current prices which will certainly change if you watch this video in the future rather than on the day it was published. In addition to that, links down below will be my two build videos for my Ryzen 7 and my Intel i7. Check those out if you're interested in seeing the computers that these modules were tested in. First up, I want to talk about DDR4 memory in general. DDR4 is simply the latest version of double data rate memory that has been around for a very long time. DDR1, or just DDR, was original, and then we had 2, 3, and now 4. Now, the actual clock speed of the memory is half of the rated speed of the memory. So when you see memory that's rated as DDR4-2400, the actual memory modules run at 1200. When you see DDR4-3200, the actual modules are running at 1600, half of the listed speed. This is because they transmit data on the rising and falling edge of the clock. So they're capable of double pumped or double data rate transfer. You don't have to know that, but I mention it because it's a common question. Many people think the four actually means it's running four times as fast and the three on DDR3 means it's running three times as fast. So to answer that question that some people may have, I thought I'd mention it. Now, there is something besides data transfer rate, and that's called latency. Most people, I suspect, buy RAM based upon that big number they see, 2400, 3000, 3200, etc. But there's another number, the CL rating, basically your CAS refresh rating. Common ratings are 14, 15, and 16, but you will find numbers higher and lower than this. Essentially, there's two elements to the speed of your system RAM. There's how fast the RAM can transfer data once it starts transferring. That's what that 2400 or 3200 number represents. But then the question is, how fast can the memory transfer the first bit? How fast can it respond to system commands? How many cycles does it take? A CL rating of 14 essentially means that it takes 14 cycles. A CL rating of 16 essentially means that it takes 16 cycles. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's the simple version for the purpose of this video. Lower numbers on cycle time are faster, so CL14 will beat CL16. Do not, however, read more into that than should be there. Yes, it's faster, but the question is, would you really notice in day-to-day -day use of your computer? Most likely not, you won't. Benchmarks will show it, synthetic benchmarks, especially those that are heavily memory bound. But in general day-to-day -day use of your computer, you are not going to notice the difference between CL14 and CL16. And to be completely honest, one tier apart in memory speed is also generally not going to be noticeable. Moving from 2400 to 2666 is not a large change. Moving from 3000 to 3200, again, not a large change. Moving from 2400 to 3200 is, however, a 50% increase in transfer speed. Does that mean that your computer will be 50% faster? No. What it means is that your memory will transfer 50% faster once the transfer actually starts, and generally it only makes a difference on large transfers. Where does this matter? Virtual machines, 3D animation, video encoding, heavy multitasking, those type of things, file compression, um, remote file access, those type of activities generally use a lot of memory transfers. Do you primarily use your computer to browse the web, watch videos, and play games? Virtually none of this makes any difference. The performance difference playing games on both AMD's Ryzen and Intel's i7 processors between DDR4-2400 and DDR4-3200 is in the single digit percentage points. We're talking maybe 2 or 3%. What does that translate into real world? One frame per second on average at 60 frames per second. It is a rounding error and you're never gonna notice it. So why watch this video? Why does this matter? 
Because a lot of people don't know that, and a lot of people will go, well, isn't faster better? Shouldn't I spend more money? For most people, no, it really isn't worth the money. Please note that I said to most people, there are exceptions. And one of the key exceptions is what processor are you running and how high end is your computer? The faster your CPU, the more programs you're running, the more difference it makes. A top of the line Intel i7 overclocked to five gigahertz or a Ryzen 7 overclocked to four to 4.2 is gonna notice much more difference with fast RAM than a more mid-level processor is. So, if you have a mid-level system in the $800 to $1,200 price range, none of this really matters in terms of performance. You are not going to see a serious difference. On the other hand, if you have a $1,500 plus computer, if you're going for a top-of-the-line machine, then it starts to make more of a difference and it's worth putting a little bit more money into your system RAM. Pricing. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM in May of 2017 will generally run you about $100. This is a good example of such a kit. This is a crucial ballistic sport 16 gigabyte DDR4 2400 megahertz kit, $99, at least when I film this video. Now, this memory is wonderful because it works in basically any machine. Crucial is one of the largest memory companies in the world. I have used this kit in multiple machines that I have done on my channel in the past. In fact, if you've watched my build and upgrade videos, you've seen this installed in other machines. But Crucial is not the only available choice. You have Corsair, you have G-Skill, there's A-Data, there are others. At the 2400 megahertz speed, the brand doesn't matter as much. That is a standard JDEX speed. All of the memory modules should be compatible and should work in pretty much any reasonably modern machine. I would recommend DDR4 2400 for any of the Intel i5s or any of the Ryzen 5 processors. Now, if you are planning on doing an Intel i7 or a Ryzen 7, I would step up to faster RAM. You're spending enough on your CPU and your platform, but for the Ryzen 5 and the Intel i5 chips, I think DDR4 2400 is the value buy. Performance for the money is the good deal. Any extra money you'd spend on RAM, Put it into your motherboard or your solid state drive or your graphics card. You'll get more return for your money in those areas on those mid-level systems. Now for the Intel i7 and Ryzen 7 processors, I recommend that you step up to DDR4-3200. You get a 50% faster transfer rate, which will start to make a difference at the higher clock speed and core counts of those premium end processors. Furthermore, the percentage price increase from 2400 to 3200 is felt less on a higher end system because you're already spending quite a bit on your computer. In general, in May of 2017, you're going to spend about a $30 price premium to get 3200 RAM instead of 2400. So now the question is, which DDR4 3200 MHz module do you buy? Unlike 2400 MHz, which is a standard industry specified speed that should work on any motherboard, DDR4-3200 is all overclocked memory. In fact, anything over 2666 is all considered overclocked memory and there are no guarantees it will work. However, Intel came up with a solution to this a number of years ago called XMP, which stands for Extreme Memory Profile, a technology they founded, which basically means that the memory modules have been tested on specific motherboards. The qualified vendor list, which you'll find on each motherboard manufacturer's website, has a list of which memory modules they've actually tested, and it does go down to the part level. You may very well find different, for example, G-Skill Trident Z memory modules, some of which have been tested on certain motherboards, some of which have not, and you might actually find that some work and some don't. If you want to be assured of compatibility, you want to make sure to buy memory modules that are on that qualified vendor list from the motherboard manufacturer's website. The other possibility is to do the same thing but in reverse. Some memory manufacturers, G-Skill specifically, maintain a QVL, qualified vendor list, for their RAM, specifically the new Flare X RAM that they've designed for the AMD Ryzen processors. Now, I really like this RAM because I installed this on both my MSI X Power Titanium X370 motherboard and my ASUS Republic of Gamers Crosshair 6 Hero motherboard, and it ran at 3200 in automatic mode, out of the box, no configuration necessary. Let me be clear about that because none of these other memory kits ran at DDR4-3200 out of the box without any configuration necessary. 
They all required tweaking and most of them would not do 3200 on AMD Ryzen. Now, why is that you say? Because they were designed for Intel chips and the memory controller on the Intel chip is very different from the memory controller on the Ryzen chips. The Ryzen chips are brand new. The Intel memory controller has already been around for a few years. So all the kinks and issues with that have been worked out. Now, AMD and the memory manufacturers are hard at work. There have already been several BIOS updates to several motherboards that have improved memory support. I have already seen this on the MSI X Power Titanium board, which has had six BIOS releases in nine weeks. They're averaging one every 10 days. Now, on one hand, I would have loved to have them got that right out of the box, but frankly, Intel is not immune to issues here either. Anybody who remembers the early adopter days of the X99 platform remembers how bad memory compatibility was the first six months of X99. It finally got good and it works great now, but the early days were pretty bad. So anytime a new platform, a new motherboard, and a new chipset come out, generally there are teething issues while these get worked out. If you want to buy a Ryzen 7 machine and you want DDR4 3200, Flare X is currently it. Now, Corsair and other companies are working on coming out with Ryzen certified RAM. And by the time you watch this video, those may exist. So if your immediate question is, wait, but what about this memory? Fair enough, it's coming. But right now on the day I film this, Flare X is the only available certified Ryzen tested memory on the market. But hang on. This does not work in every motherboard. My ASRock Gaming K4 X370 board, this does not run at 3200 on. It's not on the QVL. The Tai Chi motherboard from ASRock is, and it does run on that, but it doesn't run on the Gaming K4. So you have to check G-Skills QVL on their website to see whether or not your motherboard will support this. There's no point in buying it if it's not on the list and the BIOSes haven't been updated to support it. Now, you may take a look at this RAM and notice that it costs more than the other memory modules. First of all, the timings are exceptional. CL14 at 3200 megahertz, that is extremely fast memory, but it's also expensive. On the day I filmed this video, $175. It is a solid 40 to $45 more expensive than the other 3200 megahertz kits. But if you want guaranteed 3200, it is the one to buy. Does that mean you shouldn't buy the others? Not at all. In fact, I would recommend for most people that you buy the other memory kits. For example, the RIP JAWS 5 and the Trident Z memory modules from G-Skill are each about $125 to $130 for 16 gigs of DDR4-3200. Now I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers at you, but think about this for a minute. $130 for RIP JAWS 5, $175 for Flare X, both the same company, G-Skill, both the same speed. Why the price difference? Ryzen certified, non-Ryzen certified. The RIP JAWS 5 and the Trident Z memory modules are really meant for the Intel motherboards. You can use them in Ryzen. In fact, this 32 gigabyte RGB Trident Z kit that you see right here, you'll notice there's no memory modules in it. That's actually installed in my Ryzen 7 1700 machine. It runs at DDR4 2666 without any issues. It will not run at 3200 no matter what I do. Even if I remove two of the memory modules and only run 16, it won't run past 2666. So keep in mind that if you buy higher speed RAM, you may not be able to run it at a faster speed in AMD's Ryzen motherboard. Future BIOS updates may fix that. Please note, they are coming out with those BIOS updates fast and furious. I do know because I've been talking to the memory manufacturers directly and I have been talking to AMD and there's currently some beta BIOSes that are currently in development that are going to address some of these issues. They, this is priority one at AMD and the memory companies. They know this is an issue. They are working to resolve it. Most AMD Ryzen AM4 motherboards have enough flash memory built into the BIOS to support quite a large QVL update internally to allow them to accommodate memory modules such as this that were released prior to testing. So those BIOS updates, just to be clear, will actually enable faster speeds on existing memory modules that aren't currently possible today but there are no guarantees that they will get every single kit working. So if you buy this today, or if you buy the RIP JAWS 5 today, or if you buy the Corsair LPX today, you may be stuck running at 2666. Is it a big deal? No, I run mine at 2666 and I do content creation. I do 4K video encoding for YouTube. I have tested against the Flarex RAM. 
it is a minor difference. Considering that most of my video encodes take an hour, we're talking about taking a minute off of a one hour encode. It's not enough of a difference to care about, and frankly, I personally am not worried about it. Be aware of the issue, however, regarding AMD Ryzen. As for Intel, all of these run at 3200 on my Intel board. Now, my i7-7700K is installed in an ASUS Republic of Gamers Strix Z270 motherboard. It is a really nice motherboard. And as I said at the beginning of the video, my build videos are down in the description below. The Corsair, the Trident Z, the Rip Jaws 5. Now, actually, to be honest, I didn't install the Flare X in it because I didn't think there was a point. Who's going to spend $175 to buy Ryzen certified RAM and put it in an Intel? So I did not actually test the Flare X RAM, but I can tell you that I've had these other memory modules in and they all ran fine on that board. Generally, they will. That is a very nice $200 ASUS high-end motherboard. There may be boards where they all don't. Check your motherboard's QVL to see compatibility but it's quite all right actually because the prices are very similar. Corsair LPX, Rip Jaws 5, Trident Z, other than the Flare X, they're all about the same price. Check your list and buy the one that is compatible with your motherboard. And if they all are, then simply pick the one that's either the least expensive on the day you go to shop or that you simply like the brand of the most. One final point, you may notice the RGB RAM up here on the desk. Now the RGB RAM does cost more. There are in fact three different RGB memory modules up here. Now I've already done an installation on this RGB RAM. You may have seen that in my Ryzen 7 build. I'm gonna be putting this Corsair RGB RAM in an upcoming Intel build. I'm gonna be doing a really nice, beautiful build in their Crystal 570X case, which they were kind enough to send me. And it's gonna be another beautiful Christmas tree build. Yes, I know I still owe you one on the Ryzen build, that's coming very soon. If you're interested in the RGB RAM, please note that you'll generally spend $25 to $35 more for 16 gigs of RGB RAM. But if you're interested in that, it's not that expensive anymore. It was when it first came out, but prices have come down. So check that out if a Christmas tree on your desk is something you're interested in. One final point that I want to address is faster memory than DDR4 3200. Is it worth buying? No, not currently. This is DDR4 4000 Trident Z RAM, over $200 for 16 gigabytes of RAM. That is expensive memory. Now it does run at DDR4 4000 in my Intel i7 system, and it does run at DDR4 3200 on my MSI X Power Titanium X370 motherboard. Please note, this did not run at 3200 on my ASUS Republic of Gamers Crosshair 6 board, which actually quite surprised me. Now, of course, it's not on the QVL list, it's not tested for it, but considering that it was designed to run at 4000, I actually expected that it would. It didn't. That MSI board is the only one it ran at 3200 at. Now, does running this at DDR4 4000 on the Intel board actually make any real difference? No, and for the money, it's not worth it. In fact, for really close to this price, you can actually get 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz RAM, which is a much better deal for most people than spending money on really fast RAM. That advice applies while this is expensive. If you're watching this video in the future and the price of this has come down and it's only 10 or $20 more than the 3200, by all means get it. It's not going to hurt anything. However, please note that the timings on this faster RAM are often much worse than the 3200. This is CL19. Compare that, for example, to the Flare X RAM, which is CL14. That is enough of a cycle access time difference to be noticeable in certain tasks and applications. Now, the reason for that looser timing is because the faster memory has to be compensated for by slower timings in order to keep up with the system. There is, in fact, an absolute limit to how fast the memory latency can be reduced to due to signal distances, trace times on motherboards, and other technical things. But this is CL19 RAM, that's CL14 RAM, this is 15, that is 16, and there are a variety of other speeds. So this stuff does exist, but frankly, I don't recommend it. Even for enthusiasts, it's really expensive for what it is, and the performance difference is very, very marginal.
I hope this video has been helpful and interesting to you. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section and please check out my video description. Links to the two build videos for my Ryzen 7 and i7 will be down there. Links to Amazon and Newegg for everything I've discussed here in this video will be down there as well. If you found this video helpful, useful, and informative, please use those links while shopping. Furthermore, there is a link to my Patreon account down there. If you like my videos, if you like my content in general and you find it helpful, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I buy most of the stuff I review. Now, in fairness, some of the items on the desk here were provided by manufacturers, but other items I bought myself. All of this Corsair memory here, this memory kit here, the Crucial Ballistic Sport, all purchased by me. So do consider that if you want me to be able to stay independent and continue to provide you with unbiased information based upon my personal opinion of what works and what doesn't, your support is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you next time.